Kia ora koutou. Um, this is my first ever NDF conference and I look forward to getting to know all of you a bit better over the next couple of days. Um, but for now I'm going to tell you about the innovation hub that Te Papa is planning. What is an innovation hub and why is Te Papa doing one? That's, those are both good questions. Um, to start with the what, Te Papa's innovation hub will open in 2016. Um, it's going to be about something that perhaps doesn't touch um, galleries, libraries, archives and museums that often, and that is entrepreneurship. Unlike other incubators and accelerators, um, which focus on the earning potential of products primarily, our focus will be on innovations that, be, that are useful for museums um, or that relate to culture, education, science, the environment. Financial sustainability will be an aspect of the Hub's program, um, but it won't be the be-all the, or the end-all. Entrepreneurs at the Hub will go through an application and selection process um, and will be open to taking all sorts. So there'll be a, a sort of a university stream, it might be um, recent graduates, to start-up um, businesses, to established businesses that have perhaps worked in the creative services area but want to try um, sort of experimenting with a product-based revenue stream. The hub will be open to Te Papa staff as well. Scientists, researchers, designers, the museum renewal team, curators and others. This will be critical in reinforcing Te Papa's values um, and in some cases facilitating uh, appropriate access to the museum's collections, knowledge um, and data for the other participants that go through the hub. Um, we'll also be looking to partner with other um, organisations in the ecosystem where it makes sense to run events. Um, Biz Dojo, for instance, up on Tory Street, has recently become the tech hub for Wellington City Council for all the kinds of meetups that occur around UX, you know, development, product management, um, what, whatever the community of practice or interest is. We live in a city rich with skilled partners, including universities, business networks and individuals, and we will work with them and tap into them and, um, and you know, behave as part of the network. The hub will have um, two physical parts. Um, I've just remembered my clicker. <laughs> Um, a private co-working space where entrepreneurs come to refine and develop products and services. This is actually a shot of Creative HQ, but you get the idea. Um, and a living exhibition or a public demonstration space where those entrepreneurs can then test their ideas with the public. This looks pretty high-tech. High this is um, Lockheed Martin um, and uh, th those are STEM students looking at space-related um, innovation. But it could also look like this. Um, you know, part of the, um, I guess, the, the process of developing products is actually going through stages where they're really rough and ready and being able to show rough work that, that isn't finished is, is very beneficial. In time, we'll have a digital version of the hub as well um, and we will be looking to how we can expand its activities across New Zealand um, once we get it right, once we get the model right in Wellington. We'll set our entrepreneurs' challenges to address specific problems or opportunities. Um, we want to set challenges around problems that matter, solving problems that matter. Um, the challenge will change each time we run the program and we will probably run, uh, run one um, six-month program a year. And those who succeed in our program will meet the challenge by adapting their innovations um, through a human-centric approach to design. This means testing innovations with our visitors. The first job of any entrepreneur or, or product owner, if you're working in an organisation and you happen to sort of own a, a product, you know, whether that's a, um, a website or a particular service, the first job of that entrepreneur is to validate the market fit of their product, um, whether or not their product actually meets a need um, or whether they've fallen in love with their solution. The thing that Te Papa's Innovation Hub will have that no other incubator or accelerator has is 1.5 million visitors walking through the doors to the museum every year. And in the Hub's public demonstration space, that lemonade stand kind of idea, um, entrepreneurs and innovators will be able to show and test their products um, with museum visitors. The advantage to the product teams is that they'll learn a lot faster about what's working and what isn't and as they test with real people. 
um, and that will get them much more quickly to a final product that meets their customers' needs, meets their users' needs, um, and that is a huge benefit to entrepreneurs. Um, just a bit of a diversion. At Museums in the Web last week, Courtney Johnston talked about her experience with the pen at the Cooper Hewitt uh, Museum and, and their interactive um, tables. And she said that in creating two lines, which you see on the left there, um, she designed a concrete lamp. Um, and that the sort of instant beauty of that lamp kind of undersold um, how difficult it is really to innovate and to design. So the benefit to our visitors um, is that they'll have an opportunity to interact with um, a kind of living exhibition. They'll be able to interact with the displays, prototypes, um, early stage products and the people who are behind those ideas. And they'll have a chance to influence um, the design of those ideas through their feedback. They'll get an insight into how one actually goes about thinking up new products. Um, and they'll experience firsthand what the process of design and innovation looks like. And that, in turn, might um, spark more innovative and entrepreneurial thinking. Why is that important? Well, dairy prices are down, and there are big, important challenges um, facing us in the future, from climate change and sustainable fishing and farming, to building cohesion in an increasingly multicultural society, to using digital technologies to increase access to cultural and scientific knowledge um, for our communities, for our country's remote communities. Dairy prices are down. And if this country is going to diversify its future production into the knowledge economy, we need more people thinking entrepreneurially. More people need to know how to design products and services that take advantage of digital or technological advances products and services that can take their place on the world stage. Um, and this kind of innovation, we think, needn't only happen in the financial tech sector or the health sector. Why to Papa? Well, it's widely understood by the public, I think, that um, to Papa's purpose is to better understand and preserve um, the, and treasure the past and to enrich the present. But under the Te Papa Act, um, we have a third purpose which is to help New Zealand and New Zealanders meet the challenge of the future. And the future isn't something we can archive or put in a vitrine to be looked at. The future is emergent, um, and it comes about through people having conversations with other people and collaborating with other people to make that future. And there's no point at which it stops. It can't be collected. Um, the future's emergent nature, nature means that we have to add the dimension of time into what we do as a museum. Um, time for people to have conversations, time for ideas to evolve, and time for new meaning and responses to emerge. Um, we live in a time where there's never been so much opportunity for people to author, um, not just to be readers, but to author. And they're embracing it. You know, the explosion of social media um, and networking and news feeds, blogging, citizen journalism, citizen science is testament to that. And in this new era, constant connectivity and connectedness brings new opportunities for people um, to engage and for ideas to collide um, and for new ideas to blossom and thrive. As the National Museum, with a mandated role to help New Zealanders meet the challenge of the future, we need to work with our communities as part of that community and to take an active part in the conversations that shape our future. As the National Museum, we have an obligation to host and facilitate and possibly even to catalyse important conversations. And as we know, innovation doesn't just stop with a conversation, action has to follow. There's a quote from Tim O'Reilly, who's the guy who, among other significant achievements, um, coined the terms open source and Web 2.0, and it goes like this. If you talk to any entrepreneur or business owner or product owner, you'll hear about the process of learning they went through, even failing um, on their way to finding a product that actually met their users' needs. Market validation around products that have social, cultural, educational, uh, environmental or scientific impact is something we can help our communities with. We hope the Innovation Hub will help all of us um, meet the challenges of the future. Um, 
GLAMs, scientists, educators, citizens, entrepreneurs, New Zealand. Um, and in return, that will enhance our relevance as a museum to our communities. If we get it right and we use our global standing and connections to help springboard our entrepreneurs, um, and we are on the ambassadorial circuit, we do have those um, outreach opportunities, uh, then we'll also be able to bring an international focus to New Zealand um, as a centre for innovation and a source of positive change in the world. It's pretty exciting stuff. Um, so the final thing to say about uh, the hub is that it isn't even here yet and still it is going to change. Um, the idea of what it is and how it works won't be fixed. Um, when I arrived at Te Papa four months ago, um, there was already a 40-page business plan and it looked very concrete and there was a Gantt chart with lots of activities that, uh, and milestones we were going to hit, but it didn't really under, sort of answer the fundamental questions about who it was going to be for and why we were doing it and how we were going to fit into the local um, ecosystem. Since then, we've done what startups do, and we've got out of a building and gone and talked to a lot of people from council, through government agencies, through um, small businesses and startups, through um, universities and students. Um, and the hub will evolve um, in response to the needs of those participants um, and supporters and visitors over time. It turns out there are a lot of creative technologists out there who are doing great stuff with technology, but they haven't found a problem that's worth solving yet. And those are the kinds of businesses we hope will come into the hub. Uh, what we think it is now might not be what it looks like in a few years' time. The hub itself is a startup, and like all startups, um, we're learning as we go and embedding that learning into the development process. I don't expect it will be a straight path to success. I think we'll succeed at some stuff and we'll fail at others and we'll learn to do better as a result of that failing. And that actually, that process of experimenting is the process of innovation. Thank you.